All right, we're ready to roll into our next talk. Uh, so we have a workshop with Birke Shrupup, who has been using Hugo for over two years, shares Hugo tutorials on YouTube, and has developed landing pages and company websites with Hugo. Birke is an avid caver. Um, so he's talking about how to create a Hugo theme from scratch. Um, this is a live workshop, so if anyone has any questions during it, put them on the chat and um, I'll read them out to, to Birke. All right. Birke, welcome. Hello, hello everyone. Great to have you here and uh, excited to, to go through this workshop today. Uh, I'm excited as well. Uh, so that's my first uh, first workshop uh, in my life. So I hope it's going to go, uh, go uh, well. So I shared my screen. Uh, is there any problems with it? Is it working correctly? Yeah, looks great. Great. Um, I prepared a design for this workshop and it's available on Figma. Um, usually people are um, creating Hugo uh, sites as blogs or personal websites. But today I decided to go with a uh, some company like uh, website design. Uh, it will contain um, a home page and services pages. There are going to be sub pages like digital transformation, data analytics, uh, such that. And I uh, designed a about and contact us uh, pages as well uh, for our team. So we have some limited time. Uh, so I uh, designed the theme uh, related to that. Uh, if you learn how to do that, uh, you can improve the design, but uh, I will stick with a uh, minimal design for this uh, workshop. And um, technically I will use Tailwind to speed up the process. And uh, also because of that, this workshop will include how to um, install Tailwind. So I will go to my terminal. Uh, I'm currently using a Linux machine, uh, but you can do it in uh, whatever operating system you want. Uh, you have to download Hugo if you want to create a website. So you can go check out Hugo's website's uh, installation page uh, for your operating system instructions. And because of uh, we going to use Tailwind, uh, you will need an NPM installed on your machine. So right now I'm using Hugo 112.3 uh, version. But uh, this workshop uh, do not require a specific version. You can probably use it with any version you want. So also, this um, goes with NPM as well. So, all right, I will spin up a new website. Here you go, new commands uh, required for that. And I will name my site as uh, my site uh, for this uh, case. It's uh, like a lightning generated our site uh, as a folder with uh, the name I gave it, uh, it's called my site. If we go into that, uh, we have some folders in it. So there are archetype, assets, contents, and such. So I will just uh, quickly say what they are. And uh, Hugo is a content-based uh, uh, site. So we have content folder to store our content in it. And we store our content as a markdown files. And they contain uh, something called front matter for uh, special parameters we can store. And we have layouts folder to store our um, layout specific HTML files, which is where we spend our most of the time. And we have static folder to store our static assets like image, uh, JavaScript, CSS. Also, we have assets folder to store our um, static assets as well, but it's not uh, being shown to user, shown to end user when we deploy the site. Uh, we can pre-process them. Uh, I will not get to that uh, in this workshop. Uh, we have data for our structured data, and uh, we have, a, uh, for this purpose, we have themes folder as well. Uh, and we're going to create our theme under that folder. So I will just do that. Uh, here you go, name, theme. And I will call my theme as a my theme. And it's created a folder under themes uh, folder. So I will open up my theme box. Uh, let's go into the themes folder and my theme. As you can see, uh, it contains similar files like uh, basic uh, Hugo site contains, but uh, different from that, we don't have content files because you don't want to store contents on your theme. Uh, yeah, so 
uh, layouts, static archetypes are the same as the sites uses. So uh, yeah. Now we have to tell the Hugo, uh, I want to use this theme. So we have to say that. And to say that we have a configuration file Hugo gives us. Uh, by default, it comes with TOML, but you you can use a YAML and JSON as well, but I will stick with the uh, default. So in order to say the Hugo, I want to use my DEEM, we have to tell that DEEM equals and your DEEM name, but using your folder name is important because it uh, will find it uh, with your folder name. All right, uh, I said it's the config, and now we can go to the installation of Tailwind. Uh, as I said earlier, this is not required, but speed up process, I will be using Tailwind. If you're going to use CSS, you don't need to follow this uh, process. So I will initialize uh, NPM in my Dean folder in order to create an NPM package. It's created that, and I will install some Tailwind related uh, packages, dependencies. It don't take too much time. And right after that, when it's downloaded, uh, I will initial Tailwind related config files. Uh, it will be post CSS config JS and Tailwind config JS config JS. So uh, we don't need to set up too much. Uh, we just need to say uh, Tailwind to um, listen our content files. So just do that. Um, I will find my Tailwind config, and as you can see, we have content fields. I will update it with um, this uh, array uh, here. So what it will do, it will listen uh, HTML and JS files under content folder and layouts folder. So when we add classes, it will update the table and CSS. All right, then um, we can move to uh, our table and CSS here. So we need to store the uh, CSS, table will generate. So to do that, Inside our Dean folder, I would like to create an assets folder. As I said earlier, um, assets are not directly shown to user, not like static files. So under assets folder, I would like to generate a CSS folder. And inside it, I will create a style CSS file, which will contain the Tailwind required imports. All right. After that, um, in order to uh, our site to use Tailwind, we need to do some processes and those processes require a command, but uh, as a human beings, we can't remember all the commands. So I will just copy paste uh, my scripts so we can just use them magically every time we need with uh, NPM commands. So we have build and watch. Uh, they basically doing the same, but watch has a watch tag. Uh, what it does, it looks for uh, your style CSS that we created in assets folder and Create a, you by using that creates an output file and sends it to your static uh, CSS styles uh, CSS file. Watch uh, command is doing the same, but it will be constantly running on the background and um, checking is there any change. If something changed, I will up, uh, update that. So all right, uh, for this workshop we will be using watch command. All right, now uh, I forget to say that. Okay, now we um, edit required things for Tailwind. So let's try is our um, build command works. So it's that something. Let's check, uh, is it created our static CSS? So in our static CSS, yeah, it generated uh, our Tailwind, which is great. Now we can use uh, Tailwind in our Hugo site. But by default, you go, don't know where this CSS come from. So we have to dive into layouts folder. So in layouts folder, we have some, um, we need some information at start. Uh, Hugo gives us a underscore default folder, which contains our default files like base of HTML, list HTML, and single HTML. Base of, uh, as you might guess from the name, it's the base of our HTML files. So our uh, every page will contain this uh, structure. And you can see there is uh, are something called partials. Partials are uh, like components in if you are coming from front-end world. Um, we have head partial, 
header partial and footer partial. He got just directly gave us. And there is something called block. Blocks are slots like in Vue.js uh, where we can put our content in it. Like I want to place some HTML under the main. That means we can create multiple blocks if we need for our use case. But for today, main will be enough. All right. And we have index HTML and 404 HTML. 404, as you might guess, it's a 404 page. And index.html is the page when we open our site, this page will show up to the user. And right now it is empty. And when I start the Higo uh, inside my um, site folder like that, and if I go to my browser, um, I will take it here. It says page not found uh, because we currently have nothing in it. So I will just come up here and write these magical things here. And now we have content. In it. So what we did here, um, as I said earlier, we have blocks. So we have blocks to put our content in it. So I just said uh, the Hugo, I want to use main block and put my content in it. So that's what it did. And if you're familiar with Tailwind, uh, our Tailwind is not working yet. So because we didn't link it yet, I will head back to my partials folder. If you remember in the base of, we imported our partial head.html. Hugo uh, did that. Uh, I will copy my uh, code here, which includes my um, basic had codes like meta charts, B port for responsive view, title, and link. This link, as you might imagine, pull up our style CSS from static folder. We didn't write static because uh, when we deploy build our Higo sites, it will just technically put those static files under the root folder of uh, the build uh, public directory. So we can just run uh, by link that, we can pull the style CSS. And if you're not familiar with Higo, this can feel strange to you. Uh, this is a basic HTML title tag. And inside that, we are looking through Hugo configuration, so our site configuration, hugo.toml file. Uh, that's where this site come from. And it's title parameter and just uh, placing it there. So if you remember, there is nothing writing now, our um, title coming from hugo.toml and our Tailwind CSS uh, is coming here. So if you not try, uh, trust me, we can try that by creating a div and trying some Tailwind specific classes. Uh, it's not going to work because we are not listening Tailwind on the background. I'm going to my Dean folder and I will run npm run watch now which will listen my CSS changes. And now it should become red, yeah. Uh, there is some delay between um, the builds because that's Tailwind related, not Figo related. Figo does the, this job super fast. Um, okay, now we have Tailwind working on. So I want to move on to my design and let's get back to design. In the design, we have some stuff that are repeating too much like header, and footer, those are all the same on all pages. So, and to save some time, I just coded those before and I will just copy paste them here. So I will go to my header HTML and place my HTML. Uh, this is just, there is nothing Hugo specific rather than the range. So those all others are just tail in CSS and HTML. So what you see here is um, the range. If you're familiar with the go length, the range is used for the loops. So we are looping something. And if you remember from the head HTML, there is a site. So this is looking from the site configuration and looking the menus and the main menu. So it's basically looping main menu items and creating anchor tags for each of them and placing the URL here on the href attributes and the name on the anchor tag. So but when we go to our sites, we're not gonna see our links because we didn't define them in our configuration. So just go there and define them. So I'll just place them here. Uh, 
again, this uses Tomal, so those are those uh, brackets are Tomal related. What we are basically doing, I want to create a main uh, menu under the configuration file. You have to give it an identifier. It should be unique. Uh, no one should use it. And generally, we are using uh, lower cases here. The name is what users see, what end user sees. Uh, the URL uh, is the URL. When I click, it will redirect the page. And different from that, you will see wait. Weights are used for ordering. You know, I want to get um, my services at the first, then contact, and then about. If you don't do that, it will be order them from the identifier of the names by alphabetically. So I don't want that order. That's why I edit, edit weights. So if I save it and go back to site, you can just immediately see the um, services contact and about coming. So that's great. And uh, my site is dark, but it's currently white. So let's add the colors. And to speed up, I will just um, define those colors in my Tailwind config. So I can just easily pick them up whenever I want. So I will just do that by copying it here. And yeah, I created white, gray, dark gray, and dark blue colors here. So if I go to my base of HTML that we talked before, and inside the body, I will add a class uh, called BG dark blue. It should add a dark blue to my page, but I can't see the text. So I will add text white. And now I can see the text coming on. And all the content on the page has a uh, left and right spaces uh, because of the container tag, but currently it's just on the left. So I want it to be containerized. So just that container and a mix auto on our content block. And now it's centered. All right, cool. Now we have our header going on and we can move on to the next part, is, which is hero partial. Uh, I call it as a hero because every page has that and it has a big title and optional uh, subtitle. So let's create that partial. That's going to be our first uh, custom partial. I will just come up to partials folder and create a, fo a file called hero.html. You can name it whatever you want. And again, as I said, to speed up, I will just copy that code here. Yeah, there's a basic section and uh, there is some Hugo stuff going on. Uh, as I said, there's going to be title and subtitle. So what we are doing is there is a params. Uh, it's not using site now because every page can have, every page has different titles. So we cannot use a generic title here. So what I did is I'm checking from params. Uh, params are coming from content files. We, as I said earlier, we have front matter our, in our markdown files. And in our front matter, we can define custom parameters like hero I defined here. And it also contains a sub variable called title also on here as uh, well subtitle. So when we add it to our index HTML, partial, sorry, hero.html, We will see nothing going on, right? Because we didn't define those front matter parameters. And when I add them, that's not going to work as well because we have to give those rights to the uh, partial itself. So by adding that to at the end of the partial, we are um, sharing the context with the partial. So I'm adding that at the end. Let's go to our um, content folder in our main site. Right now, there's nothing in it. and. In order to add um, front matter, in order to add a markdown file for our homepage, we have to create something called underscore index.md file. Uh, you may say, why you name it like that? Because Hugo um, has a different content uh, structure. We have single files and list files. So um, single files are does not contain subfiles, which means they are maybe some kind of a root. Uh, but list files can contain subfiles. And Higo things are sites uh, as a one root page and then some subfiles. So that's why I uh, choose my home page as a list file. And that's the reason I name it like that. And now we have our um, content file. 
I can just create a front matter and front matters are created by these three dashes. Uh, and you open it up and you close it up. And at the bottom, you can just write whatever you want uh, with Markdown. On the top, you can define your front matter parameters. And I will define hero parameter with um, title. And what we're going to name it is welcome to example company. And I will cover it with um, these guys. We're going to have a subtitle, which is coming from there. And now, if we refresh our site, we're going to see the text. But let's um, add a new site, a new uh, content called about. All right. And now we have about. If we go to about, it says page not found. OK, there are two reasons. Right now, because we are not on this root page, so it's not going to look at the index.html, right? It should look single or list. Uh, about page does not contain subpages, and it should look at the single HTML. So I will define main here and end it. We are ending them. Uh, if I refresh, it's not now giving a not found error. So just like the home page, I would like the partial hero here and give access to context. It's showing empty because we didn't let the required font matters. So let's add them. About, about us. Sorry. Uh, we have to name it hero and then as a sub parameter title. Yeah, uh, for about, we didn't edit subtitles, so it's going to stay like that. All right, so what if we're going to have a list page? So uh, which we're going to have is services page, right? Because we're going to have services under that. And this is going to need an index MD as well, because I want to list my services in a, a root page, right? So yeah, I just created that. And inside that, we will have our uh, services like cloud computing. And uh, I will give it a hero as well. And it's going to have a subtitle of services. And if we go to the services, it's showing not found because we didn't create the list right now, list HTML. But if I go to cloud computing, it shows the page. So let's fix that uh, list HTML issue. It's going to be similar to single. And if I go to the services, it's now fixed. So now I want to list, uh, I didn't create that page in the Figma. So I want to show list my um, services here uh, on the list page. So let's do that. Uh, we can access those by uh, that pages, as I remember. And the name, I should access that. Um, Sorry, I'm doing something wrong here. I didn't practice there, so <laughs> sorry for that. Um, I will head back to that because we don't have to waste time here. So let's go to uh, our most used second partial, which is contact us. So a lot of uh, websites going to need a contact form or some sort of a form. So I will create a partial called contact us.html and just paste my form here which is here. Again, it's just a uh, good old HTML and tailwind. And different from that, I added a parameter called context us uh, text because maybe some of our users want to define it customly. So we have that here, but I give it as an option. So uh, like menus, we can define parameters under our figure.toml file. So that's why I use params. So let's go define it. Uh, like menus, we can just come up here and set params. 
And what we did name it, um, contact us HTML. We name it as a contact us text. All right. And I will just pull what we gave here. Okay. And we didn't add a partial, so we know uh, we don't know where to look. So let's edit to index HTML. Oops, it didn't copy it. Uh, just like here, we can just call it like that. Now, if we go to our home page, we now have the contact us form here. So let's do the footer, because footer is used as well. So yeah, again, I will copy my code here. And um, it takes a little time, yeah. Uh, again, you see some not found images, so let's add them. Uh, I just can export them to. Uh, let's go to projects. Go con. I will add those assets into my not my site static folder. Uh, I will add it into my Deem static folder uh, and create a new folder called image Higo logo SVG. It can give sometimes error. If you go does that, uh, we will fix it. And I will have that phone and email SVGs as well. Okay, I added them. So just restart here go. Errors, errors fixed. Uh, it cannot find my email. Did I wrote it wrong here? Yeah. Now we have our mail coming, but there are no text like uh, our design. There are some text, but our text is not appearing because I'm taking those uh, from my config. So let's jump to Higo.tomo. And we're going to use the params as well. So what we use, we have slogan, which is probably your partner in Innovation, as I remember. Uh, we have address, we have phone, and we have email. So with that, you can just give your users uh, um, freedom to define their own values here. So just copy them. Now we have our values coming from the uh, configuration file. That's cool. So as I said, the time is not super right. So um, for a future fully featured site, uh, I will try my best. Uh, what we can do, we can show our content, which is super impo important because without that, our site is not going to look right. Go to single.html and in Higo, uh, as I said, let's jump to our about.md, right? So you want to write something here, which we have. You write it like that, and you want to get it right to your page. So in order to do that in Higo, you can just do this, that content. It will get the content markdown. Uh, you um, write it and place it here, but it's not looking right uh, and formatted, so just fix it weekly by jumping to styles and adding a row like content. And we can apply some quick styles like apply, text, large, bold, something like that. You get the idea. And you can apply text, um, like do some custom values like 18 pixel, and give it some margin top, right? 10 pixels. You can apply those uh, CSS uh, values like that if you use tailwinds. And it's not going to get them because we didn't give it a wrapper to wrap the contents. So uh, come up here. Give it a class called content, right? Now, after it's doing, um... oh, we get an error. Wow. 
probably did something wrong. That looks like a tail when you're a... Apply um, text large. Wow. <laughs> um, Does it need to be in quotes, maybe? And I've forgotten how. I don't know. I, I, as I remember, you didn't, but uh, okay. let's try. No, oh, but maybe it's saying that to me. Uh, text large. Oh, okay. Text large is not defined. Oh, yeah. Text large is not defined. He's right. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not using Tailwind as uh, my primary. Yeah. Uh, I've also used the typography package, and then you can just give, I've forgotten the class, yeah. but it has like all the auto kind of nice text formatting. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Um, yeah, it's applied, so you can just fix it. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, it's probably not in that tutorial, but you can just you know build your knowledge up to that, and you can build your own site. So thank you for watching. Uh, I tried my best to fit uh, this workshop into time, and that's what's come out. And I will upload my code uh, and design files into GitHub. And we'll share that uh, into the chat. So thank you, everyone. And thank you, Mike. And thank you, the team, for giving me a chance to present my uh, workshop. Of course. And thank you so much, Birke. That was that was pretty incredible. One, for a live demo. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you were able to move so fast and show us so much. And two, I don't think anyone would have known it was your first time. Um, so yeah, I think, I think you did an awesome job. I think Yoast had the best uh, comment. He said, you're almost moving as fast as Hugo. Amazing. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. All right. Thanks again.